Manhattan production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. Hey everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming for this club's meeting. We've tried to uh, do the best we can at changing some of the things, and that's why we want you here to get your input and talk it out, okay? Up on the screens, we're gonna put the actual write-ups so you'll be able to look at those. So I guess we'll start with page one. Yeah, they'll just come up. I'll ask them to come up. Oh, well. Yeah, you can just come up to the microphone. Before we get started, can we get a general definition? Because it used to be must, and now most of those have been changed to shall. So the definition of the board's shall. Jim? They're very similar the definition of shall is you have to do that. That's better. Uh, the difference between must is you, you're supposed to do it and shall says you have to do it. You shall do it, there's no wiggle room. Must do it, they're really the same, but in uh, Arizona, statutes and rules, they use shall rather than must, and that's why we're changing it, just to be consistent. Okay, so on, on that, what, what's your consensus? What do you guys want, must or shall? Well, shall sounds like you don't have to do it. No, shall has more oomph in legalese. Sure. Yeah, come on up to the microphone. <clears throat> I've investigated this issue. The U.S. Supreme Court has identified in numerous cases that the word shall means maybe or may. It must is the only term you would use if you definitely want something followed. If you take a legal opinion on this, I've built multi-million dollar contracts where I said purposely in them shall and the lawyer said to me at that time, so you don't really care if they don't do it. I say, I'm just being polite by saying shall. And what he's saying is it's litigious and it's ambiguous. If you are saying something has to be done, you must say must, just like I just did. <laughs> Thank you. Is that a change you want to make, Jim? Yes. Okay. Okay, we will change it to must. Change it back. Okay. So we need to change it in everything, right? Yeah. Anything else on page one? Yes. You got to scroll down a little bit. Who's doing that? A little more. Okay, right there we have taken out the following clubs. The stamp, we took out the word following club stamp and because they're no longer a chartered club. Okay, let's go to page two. They're not a club anymore. No, no, no. no not a City. Yeah. Excluding Yeah. Why are Dennis? Where's Dennis? 
Do you have the answer why your club got an exemption? It's been there before I moved here, but I think part of it is it's also a museum, not just a club. Plus, we have an awful lot of visitors and grandchildren that come through that those clubs It does have them. museum status. Yeah, this club does have museum status. I'd forgotten about that. Thank you, Dennis. That's why they're exempt. Is that okay? Yeah. Will that be acceptable to everyone? Yes. Thank you. Page two, club membership. We did do a change here. As you can see, we, we ch uh, waiting lists, we have, they have to be approved by the COC committee. That's because it, as long as a club is trying to do training to get their people in and they're making an, an effort, we're gonna give them the time that they need to catch up. And we didn't want it to have to come in front of the board. They can just call the COC and say, hey, we're, we're running a little behind here. We're working on it. Can you give us some time? So we felt that, you know, things happen. They got behind, they had construction, they got behind in training, so they're gonna catch up. And we, we realize that and we'll work with them. Can I speak to that? Yep. If anyone has something they wanna to speak to, please come to the microphone. So my question is, the COC has to approve it. Um, approve a club having a wait list or approve it every week or approve it when a name is added? I don't know what approve means. Well, they would come to us and say, you know, we have, we have a waiting list. We can't get everybody on, you know, right away. We're working on it. We can only yeah. put on six people a month and we have 70 people. You know, we had, we had a construction project, so we're behind, but we will catch up. We'll do six people a month. Okay, let's check back in six months, see where you are. Okay, and some clubs will always have a wait list just because of the nature of space and those constraints. So it would be perhaps a six month you'd con the COC? Well, it'll be, it'll be we'll, look in, we'll look at the situation and we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'm with Jewelry, Stained Glass, and more, and we're located on Grand. Um, the facilities there were 90% glass, 10% jewelry. So when we have the winter visitors, the club is so full that there is no room, and sometimes people end up having to leave. We limit our numbers due to that because it's unfair to the summer people who were there that go all year round um, because a lot of times they can't get in. Now, is that gonna be a reason for a wait list? Well, you have to remember we're all equal here. So if you're keeping people out just because they're only here in the winter. We're not keeping, I mean the, we're not keeping anyone out, but the point is once we get to a certain number, then, then those pe anybody after that goes on a waiting list. See, you should be able if you want to, if you have a piece of equipment in your, in your club. Okay. You know, somebody you may have to start a thing where you sign up to use it, and when your turn comes up, you use it. But to tell people they that can't. won't work because people don't work on schedules in Sun City. Well, you may I mean, have to. If, you're, if you have that many people, well, first thing you should do is contact the club's office and tell them you're gonna have to have more space. But you can't just, it's not fair to tell people, well, you, you weren't here all year, so you no, can't. No, we're not, we're not doing that, but once in January, when the membership's done, we limit it to 80 people towards in glass. And those people use the facilities. If somebody leaves, then we go to the wait list and add that next person. But it's... Are they all members? Yes, they're all members. So you're telling 80 of them they can work, but the other ones can't. Well, they're not, members, uh, they're not members until that next space comes available. Yeah, you're gonna have to come to the COC. Yeah. And get an approval because we're going to want to see who you're training because it's just not fair. See, in in the past, the club rules were very loose. This year, 
the board rewrote all the rules and regulations. The inventory went back 14 years. Um, so the, basically the current board has redone all the rules and regulations and everything. Um, so that's where we've worked with Bobby, Joe, and, and um, um, John Trump and Yeah, we've worked with the COCs in the past to do a lot of this stuff. Our, our rules and regulations were one page, and now they're 12. So um, we've gone through a lot of growing pains, but the point is, if people can't come in and there's no space for them, it's not fair to have too many members and you're having to turn them away because you don't have the space. And, and let's be honest, there's nowhere else we're gonna get more space. Do you have open hours in the afternoons? Yes, we do. Then you have space. That means you have space. Maybe those people need to come in the afternoons. And, and, it's, filled, it, and it's filled up a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Do you have evening hours? Um, we, we, have you considered evening hours? Then you can't get monitors. Well, if you want to have the club open and you want to serve the members of Sun City, what we're saying here is you just can't pick and choose. Everybody in Sun City has an equal opportunity to join any club. So somehow we need to navigate this uh, maybe it means your new members only come in between one and three. Um, that's part of their membership. So we have, we have to somehow work this out. We just can't flat out say no. We're not saying no, but we're putting, we will. You are saying putting, no, you're saying okay. they can't join. Well, is it first come, first serve generally? Correct. Okay, and then you monitor the count as you approach 80, Correct. and then somebody else comes to the front door and you go, sorry, we're full for until someone leaves. And then they get put on a waiting list. Okay. And then they're taking an order. Is that similar to other clubs? Do other no. folks do the same kind of thing? No. No? Um, you take the car club just for an example. They have 550 members. We only have so many lifts. So you sign up to use a lift and that's when it's your turn. But everybody go, comes in and they all get trained and they all go through everything. And if, when they sign up for something, they may have to wait a day or two days or five days sometimes. But you can't just say, you, we won't even train you or let you in until someone quits. That's not fair. Um, it doesn't need item two. Oop. Item two is called membership. It's open to all members. Exactly. And, and so the CLC will work with you to, to do something here. Yeah, but exactly. you can't put a limit and say, we, we've got our 80 people so no one else can join until someone quits. I, I don't think that's what he said. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, well, let me, then let's clarify. These are all members in good standing. They're, you got up to 80 on a particular day. The 81st person who is still a member in good standing has to wait until no. someone leaves that day and then they can come in? No. No. No, they would be put on a waiting list. To become a member. To, to become, become a member. member. Hmm. Obviously, this is something we'll have to further address with the COC, so we won't yeah. waste too much time here. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. So we have a similar situation, but we don't cap. It sounds like they're capping their membership at 80. We don't cap ours. We have 322 members at the Marinette Clay Corner. We do six new members a month. We train them. It takes us three weeks to train them and it just keeps building. But we have a wait list of like close to 100 people, but there's nothing we can do about it. We're, we're letting six more every month come in. I, I address and that. Right, but yeah. it sounds like they're capping theirs. Can you cap? No, no, you can't cap.
Hello. Artistic stained glass. Um, we're wondering if you've got classes set up, like we started in the spring and we set up class times from then through January. And we're putting people on those. Is that considered a waiting list? You're tra you have a training program. We have a training program. So you're so moving can... people in and you're getting them qualified to do the work. Correct. So you would, you would be good under the program. Okay, but so you just can't fine. say, we're, we're full and we're not going to let anybody join until people quit. No, we don't ever say that to anybody. One other thing we'd like to specify, we're, we looked at it, we saw it in another club's rules. Can you limit people if they are a member of a club that does the same thing you do? Like you've got glass and more, silver, whatever, and then we're strictly stained glass, that's it. Can they be members at both? They should be able to be members at any club. Because they we're want having to. a problem. They're buying supplies from us and using them in another club. Yeah, they should be. And able they're getting to. our discounts and everything else where their club doesn't get the same discounts. That, that's great. You get so. the business. You know, but they should be able to join any club. Anybody should be able to join any club they want. If they want to join all three wood shops, they should, because you got to remember, like you all said, you can't get monitors. So maybe this person's going in and they're monitoring at all three wood shops. They're taking, you know, going from one to one and, and helping. But if they're taking product from one club, buying it there, okay. And we say if you buy things, you've got to, you know, make half of it there, sell it through the club. Well, that's your rules. They're not selling anything at the club. That's your rules. You have to fix your rules. So how can we, what could we do to fix that? Well, I would have to get Dennis down there to see you and go through your rules and we'll try to find out what you need, to, how you need to change your rules so that you can enforce them. I think, I think there is a concern here, though, because if you've got, like in the example of Clay, if you've got somebody who's a member at both clubs, then you're, you're limiting access to more people that want to join, because if 100 people have, have membership in this club, but they're also 100, the same 100 people, a member of an, another club that does the same thing, then by doing that, you're limiting access, and that's, I think that's a concern. Well, I think they're, they're a member, but they're not guaranteed that they have space to work today. They have to wait their turn just like everybody else. Yeah. I mean, that's the issue we have. We, you know, a lot of times you have different times of the day, just like the pickleball, just like everything. People want this certain time of day to do their thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to bend and you have to do things at different times. A lot of clubs are putting on night shifts. Oh, we've had night and, shifts for ages. You know, and is your night shift full? Usually there's only about maybe five max during the summer and the winter, maybe a little more. Right. But we have people that are still working, and that's right. when they come in. So, I mean, we're, we'll, we'll work on things, and we'll, you know, we'll work with you, and Dennis will look at the rules and see what he can come up with and bring it back to us. And we're gonna be coming to your club anyway to help everybody with the, the uh, template and everything. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Come on up, ma'am. Oh, sorry. I guess she's next and then I wanna speak to that. I can speak from here. I nope. just have a No, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, no. no, you're being recorded. <laughs> I just have a basic question. What was the purpose of this meeting? To go over the changes. In Could we do club. that? Okay. It seems we're getting off on individual club concerns That's what that the change could is. be addressed individually. I mean, if they have a specific question. Okay. But if we want to just go through the changes, let's go through those and then address the individual questions later. Well, I want to, I want to get the changes fixed and the way that the residents want them, because we don't want to have to keep going back over But do things. we need drawn out examples? Well. Just saying. Yeah, <clears throat> Um, I think Preston Keese is right. 
Clay Cl I'm with the Clay Club. We have that horrible wait list. We have two clay clubs, right? And we had people that belonged to both, essentially kept people out. The clubs got together, we wrote a rule, and the rule says you can't belong to two clubs. So that's a quick way to take care of that. If that's, in, you can't, yeah, you can't bo belong to both clubs. You can, you have to pick one, right? So that could be something that could be institutionalized and take care of a lot of that problem. Can I, one last thing? We also buy product from another club, and they were selling it to us at what they sell to their members. They increased the price to non-members. I'm good with that. We love it. They can make a little money. We get a convenience. It works for everybody. I will agree with the one comment just made that uh, we're going over some things that are specific to clubs. The interesting thing about the discussion is we've already done number two, club membership. There's nothing in number two that says you can limit the number of people that are members to your club. In other words, number two says, I can join every club I want and I shouldn't have to be put on a waiting list to join the club. Doesn't say that. So we've already done that. And so anybody that's not following those rules, and those rules are in existence today, anybody that wrote bylaws for their club that says we limit how many members, then you should be writing a note and talking to the club charter office, because I understand all bylaws that are written by a club have to be submitted to RCSC and approved. That's correct. In which case, there's a whole bunch of approved bylaws that limit membership to clubs, which is, in effect, uh, breaking rule number two. So, the other thing I'll just add to this, it'd be nice to have a meeting with presidents and the board more than just called up because we're changing some rules. We should be doing this meeting at least once a year. And then you would hear about these things and the exceptions that are going on. But we should move on. And we, sir, we could do that at the members meeting in March. If that, if they put it on their agenda, that's what they'd like to do. Should be a president's meeting. Should be a club meeting. The concern I have about the last discussion about you can't belong to two clubs, we have a situation where we don't have a dedicated space. And so we only meet once a week to do knit and crochet is what we do. So it gives us an opportunity. I also belong to the Sundell Craft Club and we have to make three projects for them and three projects for us and I'm okay with that and I'm concerned that if you change the rule and say you can't belong to two clubs, what does that do to those of us who don't have the dedicated space and want to join more of the same kind of craft club. So you gotta watch the ripple effect there. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank We're not, we are, we are not saying that. We are saying that's a club arrangement. So if your club and the Sundell Craft Club want to have that arrangement, that's between the two of you. We're not saying you have to do it? No, you can't. No, I know, my, my concern is, is if that all of a sudden you decide as a board, because some of these clubs are so large. We are not deciding, you can't. that's not our decision. Okay, thank you. You can't restrict, we're all members, you can't restrict someone from joining your club. Um, and that what this says is it's just a waiting list. If you need to be trained, we want to make sure that the clubs are doing a training program that will allow everyone to complete the program and become a, a member that can use the facilities. Whether it be you want to work in this club or that club, that's up to you. But we want to make sure that the, there is no waiting list that's stopping people from getting the training to use the equipment. I see two issues coming up here. One is waiting lists that mean someone has to quit the club or die out of the club, and then they open it up and let someone else join. That's wrong. You should be able to join. 
The second one is you get a waiting list and it's like going to a restaurant. If the restaurant's full, I gotta wait. Or I have to change my mind and come back several hours later and say instead of lunch, I'm gonna have dinner or another day. We've got clubs, we've got rec centers open from like 8 a.m., 6 a.m. actually, till 8 p.m. at night. And there is space, it's just that if I come and it's full because you have only a certain capacity in the room, certain capacity for the type of equipment or what have you, you can decide maybe you want to put a waiting list for that day that says you can come back or you know, you hang around and you, you're, you're next in line to take a slot when someone finishes their work. That's different. And that should be allowed because, you know, of space. But I have the option to come back at six o'clock if I want to come back in the evening and I know it's going to be less full and do my stuff then. So working on a schedule isn't exactly what this organization's built to do. We're not the Cardinals. We're not sitting there saying we got to build a stadium that could put 70,000 people in there for one football game and it's, it's empty the rest of the time. And guess what? The tickets are priced appropriately. It costs to go in and see that game, and they may have 12, 16 games in a year, but that stadium sits empty. We've got facilities. You got to spread out. You got to adapt. You come. If it's full, that's it. You either come earlier the next day so you can get in, or you come later and you come back and you come in again. So there's two different kinds of waiting lists, and the one that's not allowed or shouldn't be allowed is you wait until someone quits the club to get in. And you have requirements for training, that's fine. You have to go through this stuff and they can't use that as a reason to prevent you from fully joining. They, they can only do so much capacity at a time, but you need to be allowed. Sir, okay. sir Thank you. that's why the sentence says waiting list to join a club. It doesn't, it doesn't talk about the No, I, I agree, but there's been a lot of confusion. I just want to clarify that because I should be able to join every club in this whole place if I decide I want to and not be told no. I may not be able to use facilities until I'm trained in some clubs and I shouldn't be put on an indefinite, well, until someone quits the club, we'll train you. <laughs> That's not allowed. And the COC is the vehicle to come for the exceptions, to explain it, to understand it, to figure out what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed under the, the, the BP-12. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. So, is, so what it says is waiting list to join a club are not allowed unless approved by the COC. Can I ask a different the, question, not about waiting lists? Uh, not it, not, yeah, not right now. We okay. just want to finish this. Okay. So is that going to be approved by the membership? Okay. okay. We're done with that. Okay. Now go ahead. Okay. Um, where it says executive board under number five. There you go. Oh, we're not there oh, we get yet. To number five. Okay. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. All right, um, the next change was on number four, it's elections. It's pretty basic. Clubs will have an election of officers each year. Does it require a quorum of the membership? It's your club rules. Okay. Okay, exactly, where'd she go? She's right there. <laughs> oh. oh, hold on. Sorry. That's okay. I'm, I'm still on number four. You're fine, right? She went yes, I'm four. Yeah. Uh, just a question about number four. Okay. okay. An election of officers. We elect half our, elect our executive board one year and half the next. Is that fine? That's your rules yeah, again. That's your rules. It doesn't have to be the whole board. No, that'll be your rules Thank again. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so executive board. It says club members who are paid for services, such as club instructors, shall not hold elected club officer positions while performing these services. So, so now it says shall, so that could be wiggle room, according to him. Um, does that, like, I'm just wondering why that's the way it is, because sometimes we have instructors, but that they would be willing to be an officer, but they can't because they want to teach also. For fee. Yeah, for a fee. Mm -hmm. oh, members are 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's a good point. I, I suspect that you know if you're an officer and you're basically running a business out of the club because you're charging fees for participants, that perhaps may not be the intent of that club. You cannot. You cannot you can collect if you're an officer. You, you cannot can't. collect for anything if you're training or whatever. You cannot collect if you're an officer on the board. So you can teach as long as you're not getting paid. Yes. It sets up a conflict of interest. Okay. So do we have to change that shell to must? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I you. That one all must not hold. <laughs> no, it's I'm going okay. back to elections. So we, I'm at Fairway Ceramics. We elect officers every two years because it takes, and, it, and our treasurer, because we're nonprofit, takes a, a year working with the other treasurer before she's even on her own. So if you change it to every year, does that mean we have to have elections next month? You have to have elections every year. However, your treasurer can rerun. If you have a treasurer for one year, they can rerun for a second year. Depends on your club rules. Uh, one of the clubs I am, you can fill a position for three years. Okay, our club rules say we have elections every two years. So, it's, but that's in conflict with right with what you're saying. So we have to change our club rules. Yes. Okay. Which club are you in? Fairway Ceramics. Okay. So my question then is. If this goes into effect October 31st, does that mean we have to have elections no. next month? It wouldn't be till January. Okay. So next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. They're all the same. So club election. We have to appear for the um, training, the safety training on some of the equipment. So, and then it says, the, and then the officers will train the other people. Does that mean if we go to that training? Where are you? That, yeah. I'm on number five, the executive board. I'm on that thing where club members who are paid for services such as instructions not hold elected. If we, if we have a specialist, if, if one of our ladies who um, who has gets paid for um, doing the training class. Can't be an she officer of the club? Even if she's a member? No. She can teach, but she can't collect money if she's an officer. Okay. Thank you. Oh, still on five. Oh, uh, Bell Lapidary. Instead of club members who are paid for services, could that be changed to club members who receive monetary compensation? <laughs> paid, you get your volunteer hours, you might get certificates. Just a thought. Do you think that there is often compensation in kind that you get uh, the officers may get volunteer hours. They might get a certificate to buy supplies. Was that a concern? Well, a gift card is, or certificate to buy supplies is monetary. Okay, volunteer hours. What is that? No. I guess I would leave that up. Leave that up to the members right here, right now. Do you want it changed to monetary compensation? Monetary compensation from or pay. pay. Should it be changed? Raise your hand. Who wants monetary? Okay. Versus cap. Versus paid. Instead of it saying paid, it'll say monetary. I say monetary. That makes it. You guys aren't, I, I think we're misunderstanding something here. Monetary means no gift card, you, you know, that's a gift card. Cash is monetary. Supplies are monetary. 
So the way it is now is you cannot be given anything that has a dollar value. Hey, it is fine. Okay. okay. So leave it the way it is? Yeah. Okay. Any questions on number six? No? Number seven? Oh, sorry. Go back to number six. There you go. Why is he not keeping it on? Do we need hidden ones that don't have any changes in them? Just go ahead. Just, just keep, keep moving. Going. I'm keeping moving. Moving. Number seven. We had um, shale in there. We're going to change back to must. And after serve without compensation, we have to put a period there. Yes. Okay, we'll go to number eight. Okay, again, the shale and the must, we will put back to must. And then we have a uh, line here unless a host punch card is accepted and punched by the club for a club guest. The club guest presents a guest pass and ID with a picture. We're taking that out. Okay, we'll go down to number nine. Again, we'll take out shell and put back must. The only thing we did here was when the, when the uh, conduct reports go to the club's office, they will be put in by alphabetical name rather than recreation number because if you trade, go to one house to another, you, your number changes. So that way it'll stay the same. We're going by the person's name. You talk faster than I can think. So going back to the new number eight, and it says that for the ukulele club, we have like one person that comes a couple times a month. So she's a non-RCSC member. So do I have to turn in form BP12-4? Can I just turn it in on my monthly count that we have like three guests that month? And then they pay their 250 to, to the club. It's just confusing, do because because we put it in on the monthly count, and I've never turned in a special form, and I don't want to. <laughs> okay, they pay their two fifty to whom? So it's you're good. Are they paying it to you? Yes. And what are you doing with it? And then we take it downstairs once we get twenty dollars worth or one punch card. Then we take it downstairs and then we buy the card and then we punch it out. Okay, I think you're supposed to fill out that form to go with the money that goes to the club office. That's the point of the form. Okay, thank you. So they know who they got money from. It does say monthly. Okay, monthly number. We did nine. Yeah. Okay, at the end of number nine, we did add club records for member training of equipment. You'll you'll save for five years. So that was number K. Number 10, okay, <clears throat> we'll change must and shale, and go ahead. All right, I have a couple of issues. Uh, the first is all uh, training monitors must wear badges. We wear either bright orange shirts or vests, and they're much easier to see in a big space than a little tag that nobody can read. So I'd like to have that modified to include some form of easy identification as opposed to a monitor badge. That's a club rule. Yeah, you can do that in your club well, room. that's not what it says here. It says I will wear a monitor badge. You can define your shirt as a monitor badge. Yeah. Okay, we'll yeah, do that. What, what club are you talking about? Vintage vehicle. We also wear a monitor badge. No, we don't. I don't have a monitor badge. Well, and I I've got a hundred hours of monitor. Last week, and I had to wear a monitor badge. Okay, well, I don't have one. No, you don't have and, one. And you I've never for, worn one. You ask for one when you monitor, and they will give you one that says monitor. Okay. 
Okay. Sure. You never met monitor bad. No, I would probably, yeah. I'm not. It says monitor on it. Hmm. Check with your club. It says monitor. All right. Hmm? Check with your club when you go back to your club. Okay, I'll check with That's my club. That's outside of here. But That's I, a club right. thing. We've never done that, or at least I've never done it, and I've been there for two years. Um, also, uh, fully trained, documented in the use of all tools and equipment within the club, monitors, all right? No, you can't possibly be. We've only got about four people in the club that know every single piece of equipment that's there. Uh, we do have a training program, and we do have special training on special equipment like welders, tire changers, and a few other things. So. No, people are not trained in everything, but nobody can work on a piece of equipment unless they've been trained. And the monitor doesn't have to be trained on everything. Okay, so if we say that the, the monitor identified a monitor badge must be trained and documented in the use of tools and equipment within the club? The monitor, no. No, the monitor does not have to be trained. I've taken the basic training, all right? I know how to run the lifts. I know how to hand out the keys, but all of the equipment like the welders, the tires, and other specialized equipment is all locked up with a key. That's right. The operator who wants to use that particular equi I did, equipment. I didn't say all. So You've got. I just changed it. Okay. I said Sorry. monitor badge must be trained, not fully trained, and documented in the use of tools and equipment within the club. Take out the word I took out all tools. Um. Yeah, I think that's more important. Is that a safety issue for you guys? Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to say you have to have every tool and every single thing. Okay, what this sentence is going to say is monitors must easily, must be easily identified by a monitor badge, period. And... Take the monitor badge out. He doesn't like it. I don't care if they Well, um, you, you can replace monitor badge as being easily identified by a Okay. By Just, and I, must be f trained. trained and documented in the use of tools and equipment within the club. All is gone. All is gone. Um, Fully is gone. I will, all right. I'm going to jump to the back here where you added new section 25. We'll okay, got to wait till we get there. Uh, all right. All right. Well, because in 25 is safety. All right. So it. Wait a minute. We're not going to do that one until we get to well, it. Well, no, uh, there gonna, is. We're me, not going to do that one until we get to it. I just want to point you out. You can come back up. Th there's a statement there that applies to this. All right. Go, we'll ahead. Address it go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Let's all right. get this over with. Members shall not use such items until training is completed. All right, clubs must provide proper training in the use of all equipment and tools. Members shall not use the item until train, training changed. is completed. Huh? That's been changed. I have the change. That's new. I, I have the change. All right, I'm just, suggesting that, I'm just suggesting that as the rule just to, to, okay, for the wording get, for this particular paragraph. When we get there, okay, we will we're, we're going to do that one when we get there. Okay. Deep breath. <laughs> Yeah, can you just leave up the board policy? We don't need to see the pictures. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Bill Lapidary again. Um, to the, the last person's point, could it say monitors must be easily identified as a monitor, be it badge or vest? Just leave it as monitors must be easily identified. Or there. Yeah. Uh, my specific point is um, 
It goes on to say must be trained and documented on use of tools or equipment within the club. Monitors must ensure the use of safety equipment to include, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The next sentence, monitors must report any club member's noncompliance on a club member conduct report. Following so closely after the previous two sentences dealing with equipment, might that be inferred, implied, thought to be associated with the use of equipment for filling out the conduct report? Might that sentence be moved to a different place in the section? I don't think we need to move it. Okay. Next. You don't have the same bunch of lawyers that I do as club members. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm with the Hand Weavers and Spinners, and um, our first concern is this um, two club monitors. We have approximately 123 members in our club, and getting two monitors to work all of the hours that our, build, our club is open is going to be almost impossible. We have people who work during the day, and they come in at night. Then we have most of our group that comes in during the day. Um, that's going to be very restrictive. We're going to be um, limiting the use of our room because of two monitor requirement. Um, our club has one electronic piece of equipment, our bobbin winder. We do not have to train for use of that. Um, we do not have our monitors do not train. We have specific instructors that do that. So uh, this, this section is too general and does not look at what other clubs have that are not automated or are not completely full of dangerous equipment. And I find it very restrictive and I would appreciate it some consideration on that um, uh, okay. two monitor piece. Do you ever allow one person in the room by themselves ever? Yes. Not a good idea. That's what we can't do. That's what we can't okay. do. Should that be in the safety section then rather than the monitor section? Is that it a safety could be in concern? Both. It could be in both. But our monitors are there to help visitors that come in to shop. They're there to handle the money of the day. They make sure that people sign in when they come in. They do not teach any of the classes. Our classes are specific to mornings and afternoons each day of the week. And then there are people that can come in during the week and we come in even on the weekends to work on our looms and to okay. work on other things. Okay, don't get hung up on the word monitor. Well, that's there must the be, section it's in. There must be two people. One is a monitor. Mm -hmm. The other person can be a working monitor who is a club member who comes in and says, in the event that something happens, I am here to help the monitor. But they both must okay. sign in as a monitor. Could we, could we re Sign in as a monitor? You, why not? <laughs> Your club rules will say what that second person's duties are. So in other words, we uh, need a buddy system. Yeah. Yes. Basically, okay. yeah. All right. So we, we can't the, and, and we call them monitors because you will not leave and leave the other person there if you are a monitor. If you're just a resident and you have a monitor, what we had happening in clubs, the resident goes home and the monitor's there alone. And we had a gentleman fall down in the back of the metal shop mm -hmm. on a Saturday. And he laid on that floor, and at 3.15 on a Saturday afternoon, someone came in and found him, or he would have laid there until Monday. And we said, okay, this isn't working with one monitor, one member. Mm -hmm. We're making it two monitors. They sign in as monitors. They, when one is leaving, they are both leaving. If you can't stay and you want one of your other members to take over for you, then they sign in as the monitor and you go home. Could, it, could you reword the sentence to say, all clubs with dedicated space require a minimum of, a minimum of one monitor and one club member yeah. in at all times? No, yeah. that's what I just said. Yeah, so can't you put that? It did not work. 
must have two people in the room at one time. Yeah. That I did just, not work. That was the rule. You had to have two. It was never no, in when, writing before this. But Steve, Steve, when that one person left, so there was only one person there, so the club had to have been shut down at that time. Right. So if you have a minimum of a monitor and a member, then you cover this. What do, what do you guys think? Why, why is it such a big deal between the word monitor and member? The member has no responsibility and can go home. The monitor has some responsibility, and that is he will not go home without the other monitor. Steve, can we add the word buddy? Because everybody no. understood what a buddy was. No, I'm not putting buddy in there. Why can't it just say two? No, yeah, just state that you can, you can have a minimum of two people in the room at all times. This one That's I'm not going to bend on because we almost had someone die because of it. Okay, but if you have a minimum of two people, put that in the insurance, insurance okay, section. Folks, one, one conversation at a time. Sorry, I appreciate that. But. If you would, I think when you, you guys stick in two monitors in there, it's getting, it's getting too muddied and it's getting too difficult. We have a hard enough time getting monitors as it is. But we have people that like to come in. If they work during the days, we'll get, a, get on a um, text list and see who's coming in, and we'll get a buddy system together. We can do that. But uh, if they're not there to deal with the visitors and the public coming into the room, we don't consider them monitors. That's they're just rules. members working. That's your rules. Mm -hmm. but you can say the second monitor is just there to protect the first one. It seems okay. to me we can reach some kind of compromise here. I don't think what you've said is inappropriate at all. That seems flexible. We just need to work our way around this second monitor language. Yeah. Yeah, so because, we'll find a way to do yeah. that. Okay. Because Thank there's you. a problem when you say two monitors, and the next sentence says all monitors have to be fully trained. Well, that your concern is safety and having two people there. So as long as you've got one fully trained person and another one there, then you cover the safety concern. However, if you say two monitors, then you're making it more restrictive and more difficult. Yeah. You know, you guys do what you want. When If someone hap dies, then that's on you. I'm done with it. We had it happen. I know it can yeah. happen. Deep breath. Be fine. So, we're, okay, we're done with that one. No, because we got people in line. Well, all right, go ahead, sir. I already have two things. The first one is on the first line, the uh, word provided is a spelling error. Should be provide. Yes. Where are we? Okay, right, right there. It yes. should be provided. Simple one, right? Thank you. And then in the yellow section, uh, minimum of two monitors in the club at all times. Um, I would like to have that uh, during open office hours. Uh -uh. No. We have dedicated space, but we're not necessarily open. Is anybody in there? No. no. They, we might have somebody that comes in to check their oh, plants in the greenhouse. Point. We don't want one person in a dedicated space by themselves. Okay. It's a real liability issue. So that's are we the, talking that's about- That's the problem we have. If somebody is in a dedicated space by themselves and they fall down, or any space for that matter, and they fall down. Okay. Okay, you go in to check your plants. You, fall, you have a heart attack, you fall on the floor. When's the next person going to come in that room to find you? Unknown. Could it be tomorrow? Could it be next week? Yeah. Could it be? No, I, that's I, why we I'm don't want you. that to happen. Okay, and so we in our in our rules we'll make sure there are always two people at a time going into the greenhouse, for example. We don't operate any machinery there, but right. you make a point. Somebody can fall down, have a heart attack, whatever. Okay, no problem there. That with understanding mm -hmm. that we need to have two people. However, having a a dedicated or a dedicated monitor list for times when there may not be anybody there seems like a, um, an exercise in futility. Why would, you have, why would you form a list if they're closed? We're not closed necessarily. We have dedicated space. We have a greenhouse yes. and we have, a, we have a, some indoor plants and sometimes people need to, to go in and check them or harvest them or whatever. We can always make sure there are two people, no problem, but we don't want to have to create a monitor list Why for the dedicated you? 
Pardon? That's my question. Why do you? Why do we what? have to create a monitor list? According to that, that's what this says. It doesn't say you have to have a list. Your own club rules are going to say what the duties of that person are. Okay, but this says at all times. We, again, just as the prior, previous speaker, this is something we can wordsmith around. Okay. This is not an unreasonable request. As long as you're agreeable to two in the room. Understood. Then I think we can handle this somehow. We'll okay. get there. Thank you very much. At all times. At all times when they're open. My name is Tony Donzello. I'm the president of the Model Railroad Club here. And... Uh, we need to define what monitors mean. We have monitors on Wednesday and Saturday, and the only thing they do is run trains and explain to people any questions they have. That is what your club rules will define. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you what your monitor has to do. All right, fine, okay. The other thing is, I like to come in early by myself, because there's nobody there, so I can do paperwork, which is required by the rec center. I cannot do that because and when people are there because I'm too busy running around answering their questions, doing things. So Okay, I'm gonna refer I don't know how to fix I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna let Kevin answer that about one person in there by themselves. As far as the insurance and the lawyers and There's nothing in our insurance policy that says anything about this, but I think it's common sense, right? Yeah. And, oh, well. And we're gonna get sued by the, your family when they wanna know why you were in there and you laid on that floor for eight hours and we didn't I'll know. I'll let you it. on a secret. No, you're not. I'm talking about me. <laughs> I'm saying that's, that's okay. what the issue is. It, is there, any way we can, you can accommodate the, the two persons at a, at a time, or is well, that unreasonable for I'm your there, group? I come in early, so somebody else has to come in early. Yeah. That ain't gonna happen. We have a hard time now getting mon monitors for just the two days we're open for visitors. Yeah. Now, usually, say at eight o'clock, there's three of us that come in. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. There are people who may come in on a Monday. There may be people coming in on a Friday. I know we have probably a handful of members that come in in the afternoon by themselves because of different reasons. I know personally, I'm not gonna stick around so they can because I have other things to do that are mine. Okay, I'm so, aware okay. of your club. I can, I know where your club is. Okay. And I can tell you walking down the hall, your club looks very dark. Your doors are closed. Mm -hmm. You have a heart attack. No one is going in there. No one would even think to go in there. I have a solution. Yes. Uh, um, if when you come in, you sign in with uh, the front desk there and you no. sign out. No, you do, if you do that, you can be there by yourself because somebody knows you're there and you just need to sign out with them when you leave. Yeah. Then you're covered and you don't have to have a second person in the room. We, do, we don't sign in, at, sign in at the front desk. We walk by and wave to them and they wave back to us. I understand, I'm saying this would give you an option to be there by yourself if you just check in with her and say, I'll check in with you when I'm out. If I don't come by within two hours, check on me. It just, it, it makes it easier than not being able to go by yourself. No, no, no. Uh, I would like to say that would work, but I don't hold my breath. Jim, Jim, I don't think we want to put that responsibility on, this, on the people at the front desk, uh, that they should have to be checking rooms and who came and who left and who didn't. And, and if they say, well, check me in three hours if I don't leave, well, what if they've been laying on the floor for two hours already? And then also, also having been a center associate before, you have shift change, and so you're gonna make them hand a roster over of, hey, Joe's in room so-and-so, Betty's in room such-and-such, that the, the monitors are sometimes just too busy to handle something like that. And that's a lot of responsibility that's not in their job description. And, and you know, you're not the only club that's having those issues, all clubs are. And they have to make rules 
for monitors. That's just the way it is. We're not the same as we used to be 20 years ago where everybody volunteered. We're different, we're, we're changing. Yes, and but, we're losing members. Right, I mean, that, and, but you have to, you have to make your mem members, may have to come in and have, sign up what time they're gonna monitor and stuff. Um, that's question. just what all the clubs are doing. Well, that's a problem. So I just want to I just wanted to ask a question. Um, Go ahead. You said you come in to do paperwork. Can yes. you do the paperwork at home? That way, then there's the risk for you isn't there. I don't do anything at home associated with the rec center. I can appreciate that's a fib a little bit. I can appreciate. I get that. the phone calls. I can appreciate that, but you know that. And you're not the only club that has that issue where people come in and, I mean, I come into my china painting and I putz a little bit before, you know, as a monitor before we open up. But um, it's just one thing, by you making one simple step change, you know, then that makes it easier for your club. It doesn't necessarily make it easier for you. But, I mean, so think in terms of it's a club. It's not just individual. I mean, it's individuals that make up that club. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Joan. Just a real quick question. I, I get the whole two people in there, but like Connie says, I, I belong to the China Painting Club. We have somebody come in about, we open at nine. Somebody might be there 10 minutes before to start the coffee, empty the kilns, whatever. Other people come in probably 9.15, 9, uh, 9.30. Is that permitted? Because we're not going to have somebody there exactly at 9 o'clock, two people. No one is going to be there to count heads. We are going to assume that you can all take, all your clubs can take responsibility and have two people in your club at all times. Okay. If one people, one person gets stopped by the train, we're not going to shut you down. Okay. If you opened at 8 and somebody checks you at 9.30 and there's no one there but you, that's a different story. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Thank Common you. sense. Thank you. <laughs> Camera kill. <clears throat> Pardon me. Camera guild. Past eight years, we've operated with one monitor only. We've operated where members can come in off hours and do something that's a long-term project, say scanning slides, three, four hours during the summer, three, four hours in the afternoon. They're there by themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's been allowed since I've been in the club. It's been I eight years. I understand. Okay. So, well, no, uh, I, I talked with- Go ahead. Uh, we won't go back and talk with who we talked about because they no longer are here. However, um, that's part of the reason we have uh, quite a few members join the club. They work odd hours. You know, they work till four in the afternoon. They want to come in at five and make a print, go home. We can't, um, with our monitor situation, necessarily say, we'll have another person there with you at that time. We can have the door open, we can have the lights on. I would think that the facility attendant who wanders grand, okay, they sit back in their room, they don't do anything else but sit at the desk for part of the day. No reason why they can't walk up and down the hall once and see the light turned on, okay? Okay. Uh, um, our, our I'm. They do a lot of things. Well, yeah, I, I know they do, yeah. but they this have to lock up the they have to lock up the building. You know, we they are should not check. living in the world we lived in eight years yeah. ago. Now, if something happens to somebody, uh, everybody sues. They'll sue the facility attendant. They'll sue the person that should have been in the room. They'll sue the person that was in the room, and they will sue the person that thought about going in the room. We have to have two people in a room at one time for safety reasons. It's just not negotiable. Well, we're here to well, protect let me, let you. Let me just say this. The membership grows when we can accommodate their desires. 
the membership shrinks when you have so many gates that you cannot let them and let them do what they want to do. And that's yeah. part of the real world. I, yeah. That happens in a lot of businesses, a lot of stores, a lot of groups. It's just the way the world works now. Sign a disclaimer then. Thank you. Yes. So we're going to have to hold each other's hands. Uh, just a comment. Uh, clearly, if one believes in safety, you have to have two people in the room. And how can there be any approved rules and regulations without that being specified for each club? Exactly. That's my question. It should be in your rules and regulations, and we've put it in the policy paper in case it's not in your rules and regulations. Is there a review of all of the club's rules and regulations currently that demonstrates, that shows that? Do you have a percentage? It will be. It will be. And right here, it says you have to. Okay. Right. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm from the Bellwood Club, and we have you know, lots of moving parts. Um, and I think you need to, to stay as monitors, because if you say it's just got to be two members, then they're not going to be dedicated to watching what's going on. So I think it should s remain as two monitors. My bigger question is, um, it says fully trained and documented. What does documented mean? All training must be documented. How? I, I write on a piece of paper and put it in a file? Do I have to send it to you? Where do we have, what do where I do? We have training. We, we changed from our train. We crossed out. Put your mic, put the microphone up. We crossed out where it said fully, and we crossed out after documented in the use of all. We crossed out all. Right, but you still have documented in there. Right. What does that mean? You do training every, don't you do training in your club? Yeah, everybody has to go through orientation. And you sign, yes. you sign in when you do that. Yeah. That's your. So your as long as it's on the computer or you're fine. It's number 26, safety. Were you thinking there needed to be some sort of. No, I just wanted it to be defined or? so when you come and ask me, I can we say. We address that under number 26, safety. Well, we're not there yet. I know. <laughs> Be patient. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. Good luck. Good luck. We're going to need it. I'm actually doing really well. I just want to say uh, what the board is doing is for our safety and for everyone here that doesn't understand why they want two monitors. I hope it doesn't happen to you. Um, I just don't get why people don't understand. It's for us. It's our safety. I don't want to be laying on that. I had a heart attack last two months ago. And um, it, it's for our safety. You people need to get it. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Bell Metal Club. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the first one is um, with respect to uh, monitors must report any club members non-compliance on a club member conduct report uh, in this paragraph. That doesn't allow for clubs to have the ability to warn somebody or uh, why don't we just say that they must, uh, must report any uh, in accordance with the requirements of the club's rules. Yeah. And then have the club rules define We can it. do that. You know. Um, <clears throat> further down the last uh, paragraph, it talks about uh, responsibility of the club to monitor the use of facilities and follow all rules and regulations. Whose rules and regulations? Clubs. 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 Then put clubs. You know, there's a number of instances where things are kind of vague through here, and you know, we're talking about at times various things with RCSC rules, other things with club rules. You know, there's there's a definite lack of definition on certain terms throughout the document. We'll get to those things later. Senior leader, management, some of those sorts of things that aren't defined, and clubs need to understand what you mean by those things. 
We thought we cleaned up the club thing, but obviously we missed one, so we'll put that in there. Um, hi, I'm from Sundial Silverstones Club, and uh, on the first two sentences, I'd like to recommend rewording those as such. All clubs using tools and equipment that could cause injury to the user must provide one club monitor during club operating hours when such tools and equipment and or may be in use. All clubs with dedicated space require a minimum of two club members in attendance, in parens, one monitor, and one club member no. um, at, at all times that the club is open. Yes. Thank you. When we're talking about a minimum of two people in a room. Let me just give an example. Line dance uses this room. Are they using any tools, any equipment that could cause injury? No. I guess it's their feet, it's the movement. And the examples given earlier were somebody falling down. They weren't using any tools or having a heart attack. So again, this whole section is rather okay. nebulous when it comes into describing what you really want. No, when they fall down, that the monitor is going to. I understand. Fall, I agree with you. It has nothing center. to do, though, with tools and equipment that could cause injury. I'm agreeing with you. It can okay? be medical. You just want to argue for sake of argument. I'm agreeing with you, but it's limiting yourselves to tool and equipment. Okay. That definition is all sorts of things, and it doesn't spell out specifically here. There's a minimum of two people required to use the facility beyond being a monitor before you even get to the name monitor. You haven't laid that out. Okay, how about if we change this to say I, all clubs? Yeah, I think uh, President Foster said there's wordsmithing that has to be done on yes. here. That's all I'm trying to do is impact that wordsmithing that has to be spelled out that two right. people are in the room at any given time. The first line will be all clubs. There's um, must require two monitors at one, yeah, I was giving you the opportunity to, to do yes. the wordsmithing. We will change that first sentence to include all clubs, whether you have equipment or don't have equipment. This will be very brief. It says, um, I hear the word in the room, in the room. There are clubs with multiple rooms. It should be changed to the club. So you have monitor or two people in the club, not the room. We did club change. space? We did club change space. that. Perfect, thank you. We changed it. So I got to thinking about some of the things that were being said and, and, and listening to everybody talk about their equipment and thinking about our own club and our monitors and working monitors and listening to the auto club and such. And it sounds like um, some of the clubs and, and, and even listening with your club, um, some of the monitors may or may not be trained on all the equipment that the club has and so which is understandable because even in our club they're not they may not be trained on all of, I'm with the so-and-so club and they may not be trained on all of our sewing machines or our sergers and such but we have cards showing which club members are trained on which equipment but our monitors are trained on how to monitor so Instead of the monitors being fully trained and documented in all the, and I know you've already talked about word, uh, changing that word, I think the monitors need to be trained as far as ensuring the members are trained on the use of the equipment that they are using so that they're ensuring the members are trained in the equipment that they're using. Does that make sense to you? So if I come into my club and I'm gonna use an, an embroidery machine and the monitor comes to me and says, hey Heather, I need to make sure that, let me see your card so that I make sure you've been trained on this embroidery machine. I can then show them my card and 
okay, you, yes, go ahead and use that embroidery machine. But if I walk up to the industrial sewing machine and I try to use it and the monitor says, Heather, have you been trained on this? Well, let me see your card. And I haven't been, then the monitor can say, eh, step away from that machine, Ghost Rider, you're not using this machine, right? And I think that's what, so the monitor may not be trained on those machines either, but they know how to identify who can and who can't use those machines instead of saying the monitor needs to be trained on every single machine or piece of equipment that, because that's understanding that all the clubs have so many different machines and maybe they can't change, maybe they can't use the tire rotator or maybe the monitor hasn't been changed. Does that make sense? I agree with you 100%. We are going to re rewrite this. Um, to try to clarify. What you're talking about is your club rules. You define what your monitor's job is. Correct. Which is in your club rules. Correct. We will rewrite this section. Uh, because make if it a little, a little, I don't want to, vague is not a good word, but um, to make it a little more generalized. Right, because if, because even what you said earlier, if our, because that's how our club rules read, and if our club rules continue to read as they do here, and even what you said earlier, making it just even a touch more general, yep. then we're still in, we're gonna be in conflict with what you said right. earlier, even if you make it more general, which we don't wanna do. I mean, obviously most clubs are gonna have to do a general rewrite of their club rules based upon these changes. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's completely clear, and I think everybody should be aware and of that. And that is going to be coming out very soon. We have a template for you to help you write your rules. Yeah. So don't everybody panic. That's going to be happening real, real soon. Yeah. We will rewrite this. We will uh, put it in here that it's club space, it's not a room. We will reword the training issue. Uh, we will talk about, but we will not bend on the two people. There must be I, two people. I think a lot of clubs are doing that right. anyway now. Now, if you go down farther, let's, are we all past the two people thing? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> one comment there, uh, if we make it all clubs, then that means that performing clubs, et cetera, will have to have monitors? All clubs have to have monitors. It's, uh, it's a duty in your club. Somebody has to be responsible when that club is meeting or gathering. Hmm. If you want it to be your president is serving as a monitor at that meeting, that's fine. Uh, it's your club rules. There, it's a responsible there are, party. There are a good number uh, of clubs that I've been involved in, performing clubs, dance clubs, etc., that don't have monitors as such. Well, they're going to. Okay. 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 One final question. Uh, Leather Club, Lakeview. We've had so much discussion on this, I'm totally confused. So the word monitor, I think, is the hang up. Yes. Because monitors have a specific duty and the specific training. Can we just change it to monitor and monitor buddy? Then we're not just talking about a regular member. We, we can have a, a badge even that says monitor buddy and that person. We will, do, we will change it to a monitor and a, and a resident. But if you get caught without a resident in there with the monitor, that club will be punished. And, yeah, that's not, that's not the issue. It's, it's the specific word monitor. We've only got 80 members. We have four, we have four sessions or two right. sessions a day. And if we have to provide monitors, it's going to be four people every day. We can't do it. We will, we will change that. We will take that under advisement. I had no idea monitor was going to create such a, be such a okay. bad word, but we will change that word. Excellent, thank you. But there will be two people in your club at all times. Okay. Moving on. Yes, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have to have a, a dissenting voice on this two people, however you define it. We've heard from three or four clubs where they have people who like to come in and work alone. We're grown-ups. We know what's going on. And to say well, there may be a medical issue and there may be somebody that will sue out of it, I think we're just being way too over brother or big brother and saying you can't do it. If clubs 
don't feel comfortable with people being in there alone, they can put it in their rules. And if people don't feel comfortable being alone, they don't have to be there. But to say you can't do it, I mean, we've said clubs are important, but we keep making it more and more difficult to participate in clubs. Dennis, I accept your reasoning, but we're going to have two members. <laughs> We're, we're willing to give you a monitor and a member, but we're not going to go without the monitor and just have a member. Okay, moving on. Monitors, members, buddies, whatever you want to call them, cannot be held liable for injuries to a club member during their shift. Anybody have a problem with that? Okay, we are rewriting that whole section. Can we move on to membership meetings, number 11? <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Change shale back to must. So we're leaving must. Must. Okay, are we, uh, Jim, all shells will become must? Yeah. Got it. Anybody have a question on membership meetings? Yay. Number 12. Number 12, tournaments. The only thing we change there is shall and must. Yep, it's going back. 13. Food and beverage, shall and must. Yep. Open club classes. Okay. We have changed this to say any club president can request to have a club run class to include non club members or guests, and they have to do it through the club's office. Anybody have a problem? Now, what you can't do is if you have a club of 100 people and you have room for 50, and 50 of your club members want to attend this class, you cannot throw in two guests. Your club members have priority. Okay? You can't displace a club member. So, Anita, would you... Because what's on the board or on the screen is not what not you read. Correct. So could you do that again? We'll just I have a bad sink, copy. I guess. You got run, and you said run. Yeah. Can you say the wording again, please? You put run in after. Oh. Sorry, I added a word. Any club president may request to provide open club classes. Is that what that says? Yes. That part's to non-members or guests through the club's office. I'm sorry if I threw a word in there. I didn't mean to. Through and run. Okay. I have a quick question. The yes. classes, you're not a member till you've taken the class. Depends on the class. If you're talking a training class, that's different. Okay. Bell Shuffleboard. We train people that are non-members trying to encourage them to join the club. Do we have to go to the club's office anytime we have somebody that's interested in learning how to play shuffleboard? Okay, yeah, thank I'm you. Not, I'm not talking about a club holder. I'm talking about somebody that lives in Peoria. Okay. No. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay we'll on, change our, that word. on our swim club, we have uh, clinics that we provide for Sun City West and Sun City uh, Grand and Festival, and they do the same in their clubs uh, for the master swimmers. So if I'm reading this correctly, then the procedure will change from reciprocals to having this non-club member guest list filled out. Is that correct? Classes. We weren't addressing reciprocals. These are okay, classes. but these are classes for training. Okay, so our classes we have classes for training. We we have a breaststroke clinic. We have starts off the you have clock clinics. You have agreements with other areas. Yes, and we're we're leaving those alone. Okay. We're not talking about training here. Okay. 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 All right. Okay, number 15, shall to must. Number 16, shall to must. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh sorry. I, did, I guess I have to look up periodically. Yes, ma'am. Uh, number uh, 
back to 14. Um, do you need to remove the acceptance punching host punch cards? Does that need to be removed since the punch cards are going away? No, they're coming back. They're oh, the back. Pu uh, pu I'm sorry. They will be Wrong back one. soon. Yep. Okay. <laughs> we can't either. <laughs> Hi, yes, Carolyn Col Colvert, um, Handweavers and Spinners. I have a question about guests. There was a big to-do about the 75-mile radius and things. That's going away. I, I realize that. But I didn't realize that anybody could come in here for unlimited amount of times as a guest. Um, where was I going with this? Sorry. Um, I'll read it. That's better. Okay. Can can our club limit the t number of times a guest can come into our club in our R&Rs? Yes, yes, yes. We have done that in the past and it's never been flagged. Um, I don't know why not. Okay. The That's what I'm saying. The club is for members. If you want to yeah, yeah. restrict it for against those who are from outside of right. Sun City, then we you can may do, do that. that. Yeah. Okay. Because my concern is that we get a lot of guests in here. They don't, they don't pay f the club dues. They don't have to monitor. Mm -hmm. Our CSC gets the 250. We get nothing for the wear and tear in our looms on everything. So we like to limit it because we don't want, it takes like, what is it, four weeks, six weeks to train somebody on a loom. And we, don't, we only have six looms available for training a session, and that doesn't leave a lot, that leaves no space for any guests to ever take a class No, there. you can put that in your rules. Okay. You, I will change, okay, I'll, got, I'll come back on the other one. I, it, I, it kind of it fits in with this. I hope that all the residents come in here and say, we don't want non-residents coming in here unlimited and using our stuff. Well, they, I don't think they should be able to do that. It's, I it's don't a, either. It's a burden on our on It's our, our community. Yeah. It's our stuff. Yeah. But that's a separate discussion, not yeah, for today. Right. Keep going. Right. Okay. I'll come back on section 20. Independent contractor, number 15. Anybody have an issue? No, we're at 15. Yes. Yeah, we're on 15. Anybody have a problem with an independent contractor? Please don't have a problem. <laughs> it's too much work. Okay. Yeah, shall and must. Number 16, club visitors and guests. Shall and must. We kind of just talked about this. Number 17, injuries and accidents. Uh, there was somebody that had a question about this earlier. We... They used to be called, we used to have custodians and supervisors. The general manager changed it to the center leader. So that's just what they're calling their people. So that's all that is. We figured we'd go by the new name that he gave them. Okay, everybody got that? Okay. Okay, number 18, club member discipline. Shall will go to must. No, no, no. Shall should be changed. Should she be changed to must? Okay. What are you what What are you saying? Third word. Okay. Some people want it to be must. Some people want it to be should. What? What's the issue? Must. It's must. Okay. It's must. I hear the majority, it's must. Yeah, yeah, you have to comply with that Okay, rules. we did make a change. Any club member disciplined by the club's executive board may submit a written request for an appeal to the RCSC club office within 10 days of disciplinary action, which will follow the appeal hearing by the, by, by, in the bylaws. Everybody, anybody have a question? Everybody understand what that means? Okay, here's, well, somebody talked about the word club. If a club, we added that word, board member, is the accused party of the conduct report, the club's executive board must not address the issue. The report must be forwarded to the RC club's office for action. If a board member is the accused party, further actions by the club board are not applicable and the COC shall in, must ensure due diligence, including the right to any appeal. Okay. In other words, we don't want your board punishing your board. 
Okay, number 19, hold rules on, and regulations. Hold on a second. Well, there was, uh, going back to the exchange, there was a, a request to uh, define the difference between a conduct report and an incident report. Do we think that's necessary? Okay, okay. just wanted to check. Okay, number 19, rules and regulations. Uh, again, we will change shall back to must. We added a line in here. Club shall use the most current mandated rules template, which can be found in the club's office, or it should say, or the RC website under clubs. We base, we covered this tiny little bit. There is a club, a rules um, template coming out very soon that we will be requiring all clubs to use. You all will have to rewrite your rules by the end of 2025. So it gives you a year. If you need help, the COC will provide you with people to help you. We're trying to get everybody on the same format, but there are places in the rules where you can make it specific to your club. Well, um, when I with this, I checked out the template that's out there now. Mm -hmm. Last year it was three pages, now it's 19 pages. Mm -hmm. There's no date on it. Can you please date these things so we know what's the most current one? We will. It's, it's not finalized yet. Well, th th there's nothing in there that indicates it's not finalized. Well, there's no date on it, so that's... Is that what that... Well, yeah. we don't know that. <laughs> we don't there know. will be a date on it. Because in there, it clearly states you have to have two members in the room at one time. So when you're changing the BP-12, so make sure you update that at the same exactly. time. Exactly. So the same We have thing. to get this updated so we can update that. Right. But none of nobody in our club was even warned that there was a new one out there last... So it shouldn't be out there if it's not if it's not it being used. Familiarized. Yeah, and we did put it and out there first. If you, yeah. if you thought there was something that we should add or whatever, because we've had other, we've had people call in and say, hey, you okay. need this, you forgot this. Okay, was this worded in some board meeting or something that I mentioned, or is this just something we're supposed to <laughs> get by osmosis? <laughs> we'll check with the club's office. I'm a little... A bit surprised that it's out there yet well, without this it, being done. It's been on there yeah. that it's going to happen. It'll be, it'll be taken care of. Thank you. Yes, our club is in the midst of rewriting our rules and regs and uh, uh, have downloaded the current template. Uh, if we write it according to that, are we good or not? There's very, very few changes. You are 99% um, good. <laughs> yeah, just just hang on to. Oh, we you might want to wait. We can't fix that report until we fix this report. Okay. So as soon as this gets done, we'll fix that one. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Should be brief. Nobody likes my ideas, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. Hey, I Club shall use the most current mandated rules template. To what extent? Form and style or and or content also? Okay, the template is mm -hmm. gonna, you're gonna fit the things that your club wants to do into the template. Template is just gonna be, you're gonna have discipline, you're gonna have this, you're gonna have that and you, the club is gonna put their rules into it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll also be able to write policies which are gonna make things stricter. And th that will be totally in, in your, your uh, So uh, we can pick and choose yep. anything and everything that is in the content. I've already written the rules and regs for two clubs. I've had the template since February. Starting over. Right, so when you go down, you're going to So when we go down, we can pick and choose. We're not going to use this portion of dissolution. We're not going to use this portion of the order of governance or... You're going to put in if you don't want, if you're not, if that doesn't pertain to your club, non-applicable. Okay. Are, are there certain areas of the form that are, that they have to have in there though? That are mandatory. Well, the, the club's office or the... COC members will go out to the clubs when they say they got it done and we'll go through it with them to make sure that everything was covered and in there. 
and then it'll be approved by Angela. But are there certain areas of that form that are mandatory that have to be in there, period, dot? Yeah. Okay. But they will make, a lot of it they will do though. Like you'll put down the, your. Yeah, well you've seen one copy I've done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And even if you've already passed your rules, you'll be able to go in there and plug in things and there may be four or five things your rules didn't cover. Mm -hmm. So then you can go back to your membership and say, we got five things here that we have to yeah, be cover. Tweaking. And you write, up, write it up and get your club to pass it and put it in there. But that's, and when it's all done, everybody will have the same. Okay, so mandated in form and structure, but not necessarily by content. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, anybody else have a question on that section? Okay, uh, okay, moving on to number 20. 20. Wait a minute. 20? 20? No, no 20. Uh, not quite. Uh, use of RCSC facilities. We will change shall back to must, and there are no other changes in there. 21. Okay, wait. anybody see a need for 20? Anything different? 21. Oh, 21. <laughs> Shall will go to must and we change director of operations. We don't have such a person anymore. That person is now called the senior leader. And my request is that we do not abbreviate senior so that it okay. makes more sense. Okay. Awesome. We can do that. Right now. Because it could be senior. <laughs> Any other questions? Senior will now be spelled out. Yes, ma'am. Uh -oh. 22. Can you tell oh. me the difference in a um, senior leader and a center head leader? A senior leader is Mr. Deermeyer sitting over there who is a direct report to the general manager. A facilities leader is responsible for the building. He's the guy center in leader. charge of the building that day. Center leader. Okay. Okay. Okay, number 22, equipment, fixtures, furniture and fixtures. We will change senior to spell it out as senior shall will become must. Anybody else have any questions? Nothing's changing. Number 23, repairs. The only change we made in here is the club should contact the club's office. Yeah. But you got I got a different one. I got no. the one I was just handed. No, 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 but you said you got rid of custodian, so. Yeah. We put in foreman. I'm, I'm down. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I skipped where it said custodian. I only looked at what we added, what we didn't take out. So custodian has been removed. It says center's foreman instead of center's custodian. The last line says club's office instead of the center's area custodian supervisor and cust or custodian manager. I, I heard some comments. Yeah, we, we, want you, we want you calling Angela. Angela, if you have things you need done in the club. I did not. Can we have a provision that whomever we're sending these things into will acknowledge receipt of what we sent in? We sent some things in and they fall into a black hole, honestly. It's just common professional courtesy among other things, but seems like we should, if we're required to send thing in, th things in, we should get an acknowledgement at least that it's been received. And that Mike, way do you have know. any problem with that? Hey, sorry, I missed the front part of that. Uh, if anybody sends a repair request to Angela, yeah, could can, Angela respond and let them know she's received the request? Yeah, I'll make sure she okay. acknowledges the request. That's why I wanted to go through Angela. I want to make sure that they're filtering all into one space so we're not losing them in the black hole. Okay, that will be done. Any other questions on that one? Number 24, improvements and changes. Uh, this is basically a change of titles again, senior leader. Shell to must. Okay, number five is chemicals, no change, everything stays the same. Number 26, safety. This is an entirely new section. And where is it? Right over. 
So if you want to have questions about this one, please let us know. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, please come to the microphone. She's working her way there. No, she's not going to hold her hand up. She's short. It takes time. She's not going to hold her hand up. Chemicals is undeleted. Remains the same. Okay, I'm from the China Painting Club, and you talk about chemicals should be stored in an appropriate cabinet. What are we talking about appropriate cabinet? I mean, we have some of our chemicals, I mean, we don't have huge chemicals. We have mineral spirits and some denatured alcohol and stuff that we might have a few cans of it. And we have them in a um, cabinet that is, um, you know, it's, it's vented. It's got some holes in it. Is that going to be appropriate? Or are we talking we have to go out and purchase some kind of special cabinet for these things? Hold on. Stephanie, you want to come up and answer that one? <laughs> Stephanie is our safety and compliance officer on, on, on campus. I used to work at a university. <laughs> Our CSC. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so what we talked about a little bit last week, I think, right? Um, and the safety data, sh data sheets um, for your specific chemical that you're using or mineral spirits will dictate what type of storage is required. So the safety data sheet um, for your particular chemical or mineral spirits um, or substance that you're using will dictate the type of storage that's required. We're going to, we're in the process of implementing a um, new software called Safety Web Plus that's going to help us with audits and inspections. Um, but we're going to gather, help you gather what you're using in your clubs um, to better help you store, dispose, things like that. So we're going to work with you on, on how to store okay. chemicals. And if, if, if cabinets, if tech cabinets have to be purchased, yeah. <laughs> the rec center will provide them? I can't answer that right now. I don't know the yeah, answer to that. That may be We're not huge. there yet. We probably wouldn't be able to do it. We'd fold. We yeah, we're not, we're not right. there yet. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at Kevin. <laughs> but yeah, if you, um, how many of you know what SDS sheets are? Yeah. So I'll, uh, most of you, I think. And if you don't um, know where your SDS sheets are, we'll help you locate those, access them. Many of them are located online now. If you need copies for the chemicals that you have, we'll help you. Um, you're not in this alone. We're here, to, we're here to come alongside you and help you. So don't, don't panic, okay? Does that answer your questions? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Not yet? Okay. I would like Listen, to request the safety and compliance department is not here to be big brother. No, this not is at all. all a part of our insurance, our safety records, all kinds of things that happen here that we've been ignoring since Sun City existed. We can't do that anymore. As I said, it's a new world. And Stephanie's department will help us work that through. If yeah. you, she may find something that you don't even know in your have in your in your area that could blow the building up. We need to know that and we need to handle it appropriately. They will be doing some inspections. You will be notified before they come in. And we'll all work together and make this work. Yeah, we're just here to help. Um, we want you to be safe. We want our employees to be safe. Um, so we're, we're here to help. I would like to request that um, chemicals should be stored in an appropriate cabinet. The word cabinet be replaced with the word manor. Not everything fits in a cabinet. Okay, when it comes to the SDS, which used to be called MSDS, I've dealt with them for years. We're using mostly household things that you have, you buy in the grocery store. That's all we've got in our club. They came through at one point going, these have to be labeled. 
Who's going to supply all those stickers saying what the danger level is? If it's one, two, three, or four. They're special stickers. Do we have to buy them or are they going to supply them? Oh, okay, wait, who's they? The safety committee, they came in, said, oh, well, these aren't labeled. You have to have these labeled. Okay, Stephanie's shaking her head. That was what the gentleman told me. Were he was they, from the safety will, committee. We will question that and find so out what that means. So please let me know. Were Thank they you. in unlabeled containers? Like were they, you know how you can get a, got, empty, a clear bottle? Yeah, we've got some because okay, we've so got so I a, think that's the definition. If it's in an un, like let's say you get a gallon's worth, but you put it into two spray bottles, you know, make a photocopy of the labels, paint, you know, tape it on so people know what it is. It's well, we usually write on it what it okay, is. Okay, but no, it's going to have to be up a level. But that's something that we will work on for everybody. I mean, the, the safety and compliance, they have some wonderful ideas, and we just need to be more aware and of our, our chemicals and our oils or whatever it is that we have. Because those sheets get to be a mess. I understand yeah, that. Quick. I'm not saying it's perfect, <laughs> but we've got to work our way towards this. So yeah. baby steps. Think baby steps. Okay. We, need to, we need to clean things up a little bit. Anything else on uh, safety? Yeah. Yeah. She's coming up. You, yeah, all the way. Go ahead. Go ahead, Cindy. Take your time. Is this going to include um, the medical equipment that we have to go to this training on? Because I don't see that anywhere in here. Yeah, the EMT, the AD, the training thing that we have to go to use the the medical equipment. And if it and if it does, then I have an issue with all club members being trained or the presidents and the officers training other club members because that's a special certification and we're not qualified to do that. Okay, let me ask. Stephanie, are you including that in here? I don't know that she heard it. Our AEDs, our safety, our um, first aid, that kind of thing. Required? No, ma'am. It's voluntary. It is voluntary. I think a lot actually make it Okay, well, I did. I signed up for the class, but it also said when I signed up that I was responsible for training my other members, and, and that's against the law. I can't that's, do that. that's a whole different issue that's not addressed. So in this that's safety. not in going to no, be in here at that's all. That's not mandated. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Yes, sir. You had a question about safety. Yes. I uh, recommended change. Uh, clubs must provide proper training in the use of all equipment and tools. I have no problem with that. I would like to change members to a member shall not use such items until trained in that particular piece of equipment. Okay. Because again, we have people who do not okay. get trained in everything. Where are we at? You're on 25? 25. A member. So we're just saying members, right now it says members shall not use items until trained completed, but not all members are trained in all items. So I'd like to change it to a member shall not use such items until trained. Okay, then you can okay, work smith it. Same as that one up there. But you're in 25. I'm in 25 and it's a whole new section, yes. The second line says club members must, at least the copy I've got. So hmm? we're on 26. The 25 is safety on mine. You've got an old one. You've got an old version. Right, You've got two 25s, I believe. No, this is the new 25 right after chemicals. Okay, so all training, is that the sentence? The new, the right. new safety is 26. So you've got an old version. Okay, because 26 okay, is insurance on right now. Yes. All right, but, all right, safety, regardless okay. of its number. It says all clubs shall be operated using the highest sits. That's been changed to reasonable regard. Okay. Anyways, the second line reads, clubs must provide proper training in the use of all the equipment and tools. I have, okay. I have no problem with that. That's been changed. That's, not in That's been changed? That's been changed to members must be trained before they use any equipment that is gas, electric, hydraulic, battery, or air powered. Okay. Read that to me one more time. It's a gas, electric, hydraulic, battery, or air-powered. 
In other words, if you're using a um, hmm, knitting needles, you require no training. Seems reasonable. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Getting closer so you can read it. My question is with regard to com uh, uh, complying with the documentation, what's the implementation plan for that, documenting the training and so forth? We have, you know, how long do we have before we have to meet these requirements? Well, whenever you train someone, you document now that they've had come in for training, right? We have lots of members from way back, but their training's never been documented. There was no requirement right. for it and so forth. And snowbirds aren't here yet and so forth. And it's gonna take some effort to ramp up a program right. to catch all those people. So what are we talking about? We're figuring to get all this done. At least a year. Okay. You know, to get the template going to get, and then we'll, and like I said, we're, we're gonna work on also, when you sign in with the, once we get the new website, we'll try and work that in to help the clubs with the training that way. But yeah, it, we, we're not gonna come down there and say, you know, you got until. Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let, let's just keep, start keeping track of when you train people. Where'd he go? He was okay with the word. Hair splitting oh. here, but uh, members must be trained before they use equipment and take out any equipment because that's really broad. Before they use, okay. before they use equipment, that is. We can take that out. Okay. Thank you for the hair splitting. Once again, a reminder: shell yes. versus it should be must. All shells will become must. Yeah. Anything else on safety? Okay, moving along, insurance, absolutely no changes. It's the way it's been since dirt was invented. Uh, number 28, club advertising and marketing. Shells will become must. We did some capitalization on the club's office title. We changed director of operations to senior leader, which will be spelled out as senior. And we changed the monthly sun views to the, what is now called the Sun City Update. We're gonna expand this, see? And we added a comma after newsletter. I'm sorry, Preston. Are we gonna expand SC to Sun City? We will expand SC to Sun City. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, Can you go to the microphone, please? Yes. I'm sorry, I'd like to go back to the insurance with sure. just a quick question. Um, I'm Sherry Cantrell, I'm with the Sun City Palms. A couple of years ago, we ran into some issues with insurance, and prior to that, the RCSC always covered us for parades and such. Um, Fiesta Bowl started asking us for a certificate of insurance, and we were told that the RCSC was no longer covering us, so we went out and secured a policy for about $500 so that we could continue marching in parades. Um, high schools are also now asking for certificates of insurance from us. So I just wanna make sure that we were given the correct answer, that we are no longer under the general liability policy for when we go out and perform. Is that correct? There. Is this on? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. The issue there is when you're performing off of our premises, uh -huh. that's where our insurance would no longer cover that. Okay. And so that's that's why we asked or we were required by the Fiesta Bowl and sounds like other um, events that you're being asked to participate in, you're being asked for evidence of insurance because our policy doesn't cover you when you're off of our CSC property. That's why that requirement is there. Okay, I just want to be sure that we got the right answer a few years mm -hmm. ago, because we're paying now for this insurance, so I, and we're fine with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Since we came back to insurance, uh, I have a question regarding um, the club members being insured under the general liability policy we're acting in the capacity of a club officer, member of the club's executive board, and why not on duty monitors. Monitors are required by the RCSC. Monitors are agents of the club. Monitors act at the direction of the club and the RCSC. 
they need to be covered under that policy. To say in part 10 that they're not liable is different from saying they're covered. It was mentioned when we started this that it's a litigious society. You know, they're gonna cast a wide net, they're gonna go after RCSC, they're gonna go after the club, they're gonna go after the member or the monitor and so forth. No monitor should have to pay for their uh, legal fees if they get caught up in something like that. So I defer they're an agent of the club. They should be specifically addressed here as covered under the general liability policy. I defer, Kevin. Um, yeah, that's a that's an issue that I'm going to have to ask our broker about, and I'll get back to the. Okay. The and I want to add on to that too. So, if a club decided to have a safety officer, because we have a lot of new safety rules and things like that, and they miss something, and then they be liable, but they're acting as an agent of the club as well. I mean, how far down that line? Obviously, board members, monitors make sense. What about other people acting in? Uh, a supervisory or a leadership capacity, but they are not actually on the board. Where do they fall in that? Kevin, in, a prior, that offhand, in a prior life, um, if you were working under the scope of your position and you gave the information, if you were trained and gave the proper information, you were covered. Does that apply here? If you weren't trained in welding and you showed somebody how to weld, you shouldn't be covered. I'm going to have to defer. I don't want to give bad information okay. here. I'm going to ask that question. Yeah. But I think the easy solution there would be to have your safety officer be a, a member of your board. But under being your, a board member rules. takes on a lot of extra yeah. duties as well, but, so it's a... Well, it doesn't have to, if that's the only job of that board member. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in one more. What about our teachers that volunteer that are members? Are they covered if they teach somebody the wrong way to use a loom and it pops up and hits them in the face or something? <laughs> you know, they're, they're doing a lot of responsibility too. So just to throw that out. If you're getting paid to they're, teach, that you should have your own. They're, they're volunteers. All of our teachers and mm -hmm. hand weavers are volunteers. Are they, are they members? members? They're members. They're all members and they're all volunteers. We don't pay our teachers in hand weavers and spinners. Just a, just a thought since it came up about monitors. They fall in the same category as a monitor. They're a member and they're doing another mm -hmm. job for the club. A specific answer and it may be the line gets drawn that doesn't include some of those folks, but at least you'll know. That, that's, that's, that's right. That's what I... I, I don't know what which should yeah. be, but I want, want to know so I can go back and tell the room. No, that, yeah, and we'll try to that. accommodate that. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, are we, uh, insurance been resolved? Okay, we will get more information on that. Uh, number 28, club advertising and marketing. We've started that one, are we, just some minor changes there. Number 29, club contributions and sales shall will go to must. And we added club, clubs must remit all ac applicable taxes annually. Right. We crossed out the area that says clubs may submit a request to the director of operations to showcase items with the club name only outside their dedicated space on a temporary basis at our CSC facilities. Um, I don't know how or where that applied, and I don't know if we do that. We do do that. When you open up at Belt, you put a sign out stating the name of the club, and you roll it in, and you oh. close for the day. So that's what I'm reading that to do. I don't think that's called showcasing items. That's in your club. That's not outside. Like the metal club in Georgia's. Some of them are outside. In the Georgia's restaurant, the metal club has taken That's true. Is that the metal club? Okay, that no longer exists. Okay, we're all getting updated. <laughs> okay. We don't have a director of operations. Okay. Okay, moving on, uh, raffles. Wait, uh, yes, ma'am. Club contributions and sales. On the bottom line, it says, um, 
Clubs can only sell supplies and raw materials at a reasonable rate for club member use only. We cannot sell it to the general public. Okay, can we sell it to guests? Because if you have a guest come in, I teach a rug technique that has a specific needle that you cannot buy at Hobby Lobby. Lobby, there's one place back east that I get them. So I keep them on hand, and if I have a guest, and I can teach this in three, three lessons, <laughs> I can sell them that $20 needle so they can take that class and learn. That's if I can't that. sell that to them anymore, then we might as well not have guests in our room. They've been invited in your room um, punch card or whatever. I would like administration to plug their ears right now. Uh, <laughs> yes, they have punch card uh, and don't and ask for permission, words. ask for forgiveness. Oh. <laughs> okay, I like that. That would be a minor, minor thing that I would. We don't because want we you have, opening a business to the outside public. As no, and we is. don't do that. We have a couple. Our club is unique. We teach nine different crafts in that club. We have nine or ten different yeah. teachers in that club. Yeah, I guess. All, but but this is for a guest that somebody brings in. That's fine. Okay. A guest is a so member change of it to club city. members or guests? No, no a no, guest is an outside residence. A, vis a guest does not live in Sun City. Right? Am I wrong? Yes, you're wrong. Isn't a guest a member and a visitor? No, no. 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 A visitor is. Got it backwards. Is, right way, got it backwards. Yeah. Just uh, no. I, uh, I can't imagine why we would ever think to shut down a club because they sold a certain needle. <laughs> so but, that would be beyond. And we do do fiber yeah. too for our uh, 3D. Yeah. Uh, Just be careful you're not running a business and competing with the private sector. So can you right. change it to club members and guests? Yeah, yeah, that would be good because because it's it's silly to. If we were teaching weaving to a guest, which we can't do that right now, their kits cost. $55 and they cannot bring in their own things. They have to have the materials that the teacher is teaching. Okay, we will ask uh, at. Wait a minute, are they coming in at, under a punch card? Yes. Okay, so then if they're, they're, they're under a punch card, you're okay. Yes. So then if you're a guest, a guest is a punch card, so that's right. okay. But that's not what this says. This would, is it, would it help if we added a club member or invited guest? Yes. Use only? Okay. That would make sense. That would make it clear and nobody would come back and say, well, where did, who told you that? <laughs> okay. You don't want to leave out the business. Well, the visitors can because they they can join the club. They can join if yeah. they're going to want to learn that three-day technique. They have to join the club. That's where I get into this. This guest things really get a deal because they don't have to play miniature. They don't have to pay membership. They don't have to monitor. So, and I have heard through the grapevine back here that we can charge in addition to the 250 for a guest. Is that correct? You can charge. I don't want to answer the question. I'm I don't want to answer that question. I think we'll leave that up <laughs> in, in, the, in the nether world. And what does that I help? Honestly How does don't, that help don't, me? Don't, no. <laughs> I know there are some clubs that charge that. more, but the extra they charge goes to a teacher. I don't know any club that just charges extra because they want to charge extra. Somebody back there told me they did. I'm not going to point training, fingers. If you're training them, the teacher can get paid. But we don't want our teachers paid because then you have to fill out that. That's fine. All That's those fine. forms. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't know the answer wait, to that. The instructor can get paid and donate it all to the club. So they're not making any money. So there's no. Okay. So we would we would ask for a donation to the club to teach them this technique. Yes. So we could charge above and beyond that 250. Mm -hmm. And that's nowhere in here, so that's still gonna be just word of mouth? That would be in your rules. We could put that in our rules. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your club fees or, or your training fees or whatever, class okay. fees. Okay, and we would call it a donation, no, well, I believe. Yeah. Have to go and that would keep us out of trouble. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, well, okay. Let me just one quick, uh, I unfortunately, to my fellow directors, I serve on other boards besides this one. Um, and I have a meeting downtown at 11, and I'm going to have to step out now, so. I apologize. I was hoping we were going to get done in two hours, but foolish me to think that that was going to happen. <laughs> um, but I trust that you guys will 
we conclude will, this and, and I'll go serve at, on my other We will board. do our best to stay out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> that would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yes, ma'am. I just want a really quick clarification. With the striking of the clubs may submit for the showcasing no, of the club name outside the I'll dedicated temporary, de those of us at Lakeview that have dedicated space with the cabinets, the glass cabinets outside, we can still use those. We're You're still fine. okay with those, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, anything? Um, From the Metal Club, just a little bit of clarification again on the sale of items and this whole issue of defining again visitor and guest and so forth in the document for clarification. Uh, we periodically have Sun City residents come in and they just want a piece of rebar, you know. Are we going to ask for a donation? Is that what we're doing? We're not going to sell it to them. We're going to ask for a donation. They're a resident. I don't see why they can't buy it. I, I don't either. Yeah. I just want to make sure that's what yeah. we're, yeah. Okay. What we're yeah. saying. Okay. Okay. Are we, are we past 29 now? Yeah. Okay. Moving to 26, or number 30, raffles. This is just a change of shell to must, or must to shell, and it'll go back to where it was. Yep. Okay. 31, club finances. Again, we're changing shell to must. Uh, any club member, comma, assigned auditor, comma, or RCS board of director, will be given access to all financial records of the club upon a written request within 10 days. Uh, this change came in because the comma after auditor was not there and it caused a uproar at uh, one day. Uh, the second or the next paragraph, we've added RCSC to board, so you know which board we're talking about. And the last center says, um, if your club is audited, you can either request an audit, we may have an auditor come in, um, don't get nervous, we'll let you know that. Uh, a final copy of the audit report will be filed with the club's office. So it's always on record so we know where you were at a specific time. If you were in big trouble and we check you a couple years later and you haven't made any changes, we can go back to the first one. If you were in big trouble and you did everything, wonderful. We can refer to where you were. Everybody, okay. Dechartering of clubs, number 30. Wait, she's I oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking over here, Sue. I know. Um, going back just a moment to 28, where you were talking about selling raw materials. Yes. Okay, the uh, second to the last sentence on that, I think it's 28, isn't it? 29. 29, 29. okay. Yeah. Where it says that uh, you can only sell to club members. I would recommend that that be changed to card holders because, uh, yeah, we have, I'm Bell okay. Ceramics and we do sell to our clay clubs, our glazes. Okay, oh, okay. so you want to change it to card holders. Card holder or RCSC member, whichever card holder. Okay, we will, we'll expand that. Thank you. Why can't you just leave the visitors and guests in there and then there's no, no question? Because visitors should be able to buy anything anyway because they are a card holder. So you could change that to card holders. But why can't you just leave the visitors or guests in there? You want them just to come in and buy your supplies? Sorry. Well, well visitors, uh, visitors could be some, some person of out, outside of Sun City. If no, we change, a, visitor, if we, a if visitor we, is a card holder. Let me, let me finish, please. If we change it to reasonable rates to RCSC or card holders, or guests, then that covers everything. You don't have to worry about it because a visitor could be somebody walking in off the street also. A visitor is a card holder. No, ma'am, not necessarily. Yes. A guest is someone off out of outside of Sun City. Okay. If you if you put if you put card holder and guests, that would cover it. Yeah, that's what we're saying. No, you were saying visitors. But anyway, yeah, card holders and guests would yeah. make it able to sell something to somebody outside of RCSC. So card holder and invited guest would meet you. Or that, would, that would be okay, too. Yeah. That's what Anita was saying. To okay. card holders. We agree. But if it's guests. And guests. I want guests in there, not visitor. Okay. I've okay. Got yes. it. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, are we back to 32 now, dechartering of clubs? Oh, sorry, I lost me. Okay, this is basically, uh, we uh, added uh, some titles in here. The, we don't have a director of operations anymore. We're going to report to the club's office. We mentioned the RCSC board and the COC committee. We use the acronym so you know what that means. Uh, again, the RCSC board, we don't have a director of operations. We added senior leader and we will spell out senior. Any other questions? Okay. Number 33, sponsorships. Okay, we just changed some wording where it says however. Uh, we, we switched some words around. It says the same thing. We deleted a sentence. If your club is not exempt under Section 501C4, please see the Director of Operations prior to soliciting or receiving any sponsorship funding. We deleted that because we do not have a Director of Operations. However, we have added a paragraph. Some chartered clubs operate as social clubs, which are exempt under Code Section 501C7. A Section 501C7 social club will maintain its exemption so long as non-member receipts, which could include sponsorship funds and, invest and investment net income, do not exceed 35% of the gross receipts. Erring on the side of conservatism, the RCSC requires clubs to limit sponsorship funds to no more than 30% of their gross club receipts in any one year. What this is saying is if you collect too much money for sponsorships for your club that comes from outside, we could have a tax issue. So we want to make sure that you are limiting your sponsorship revenue to no more than 30% of your gross receipts. Can you define sponsorships? Sponsorships, um, the softball club has the signs out in their fields. That's a sponsorship. So a tournament? Tournaments. Tournaments, yes. I'm um, sorry? A play sale or a, a, a sale by your individual club? No. No. This, this is bringing in money from an outside source. Solely monitor. Uh, sorry? Solely monitor. Not money. Money only. Okay, the last one. Yoo-hoo! Photography, number 34. We've added this whole section. There is a mistake in here. It says the general rule on RCSC property is that photography, recording, and video may not, correct, cross off not. Video may be taken at any time. By putting not in there, it would mean that when uh, you take your kids to the pool, your grandkids to the pool, you wouldn't be able to take their picture. So we took not out. This is, um, we have, this is uh, verbiage from signs that are all over our buildings. This has been out there forever. It's just never been included. And there was some concern at the last meeting about allowing photography in lockers, bathrooms, that kind of thing. There is a state law against that. So that is not included in here. I'm sorry, what I'm not sure anymore. So, for clarification, oh. is the general manager's approval required in here somehow? Without the permission of the general manager, so they may be taken without the permission of the general manager? Right. You can go take a picture of your grandkids in the pool without the general manager. Okay. So, as far as individual clubs having closed circuit cameras installed to monitor safety and security? They're allowed. Pardon me? They're allowable. Okay. Great. Yeah. Now, club monitors should be used for safety and security. They shouldn't be used because you want to check up on somebody and see what they're doing. <laughs> you know, use them for the purpose they were meant. 
All right. Okay. A absolutely. I mean, I think club rules should include provisions for monitoring and review of the cameras should they exist. And uh, that's that, your club rules. Yeah, and that members can. That's the duty of your monitor. Yep. Point, Steve. Um, if your club wants to make this stronger, yeah. that would be in your club rules. Yes. Your club rules could say, uh, uh, uh no pictures, whatever. And as long as your club members agree to that, that, that can go in your rules. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate place to bring this up, but I did send an email to the board. <laughs> I knew you'd be back. <laughs> Yours is a little different because okay. we're dealing with an outside uh, company coming in and wanting permission. Okay. It's not a club member, a family, you know, it's somebody in, within Sun City. We have yours and we're going to be discussing that. Okay, so is there any reason for me to bring it up at the exchange meeting or is this something that? Uh, you can if you choose. Yeah, bring um, it up there. Yeah, I mean, you I can. Don't, I don't need to if you're going to be no, bring discussing it. No, it. it's probably a good idea to bring it up and, and so that uh, all of the residents have some idea of what's going on. Okay, and that does it need to be on the agenda for the Not board? for the exchange. There's nothing, no. uh, there is no agenda for the exchange. I just show up much. and talk about you it. You talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay, got okay. it. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Can't hear you. If we have a security system in our club, do we have to have something posted on the door? We have signs in the club that state we. Uh, I don't think so. Because I know like you guys have a I, nice I, posting on the door out there. Do you have, well, you have the public coming into your club, right? You we have people walking in that are not members. Yes. It would probably be a good idea. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have anything? This is your moment. <laughs> if, if we're done, I want to thank you guys for including in, us on this. Um, we appreciate being able to give our input. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but for future meetings, you, we have two different versions of this between all of us out here. And that made it very, very crazy trying to figure out what the changes were that we didn't make. I printed this off and had no idea that you'd updated it and I should have printed off an updated copy. And that's the one I, I thought I printed. And well, if our president got it, she didn't pass it on to me. So, yeah. Yeah. but there's a bunch of us that have two different yeah. copies out here, and it's been very confusing. Yeah. We were so. under the understanding that you all had the most current one, but because she sent it out to the president. Yeah, I, this yeah. one has no date on it. And I asked, looking around, the other one's yeah. had an updated on it. But I had no clue. I'm not on the board now, so I had no clue. So I'll blame that on our president. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, but just just so you guys. Were Anyone aware. else? Yes. Quick question on the um, photography. Yes. It says an indoor. So if anyone in our club is, if everyone's agreeable to someone taking video or photography, we don't have to get in touch with the general manager, right? No. Okay. So does that mean we are only doing the photography or someone else can come in and do the photography? You are in charge of the photography that happens in your club. So if we have it, if you want to restrict it to club members only, but we don't have to. If we if we right. give someone else permission to, right? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Everybody. Thank you all so much. We'll make your changes. of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members.
Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.